Good evening. We're learning Maseches Psachim Daf Lamed Beis tonight. Mark is going to sub for us. We are starting at the Mishnah on the bottom of Lamed Aleph on the base, and um, this Mishnah is somewhat similar to what we learned in the past, where you're doing two things wrong at the same time. You're eating truma that happens to be chametz. And we're going to go through the iterations of uh, Shogeg and Mezid. And then we're going to be analyzing uh, how to pay back the truma that you uh, inadvertently stole. Uh, it's the language of steel is intentional, as you'll see in the Gemara. The Mishnah writes, Lamed Aleph, Lamed Beis, five lines from the bottom. Ha'ochel trumas chametz bepesach. A person who eats truma, which is also chametz on Pesach, if he does so, Bishogeg. Now the Meforshim point out that this word Bishogeg is not about the chametz. It's about the truma. If you ate the truma, which happens to be chametz b'shogeg, you may have intended to eat the chametz. That's fine. But on the shogeg part, you were, on the truma part, you, you made a mistake. So if, in that case, what do, you, what do you do? The halacha is, and we know this in general, that when one eats truma b'shogeg, they're mishal and karim chomesh, they're supposed to pay um, the principal plus 25%. It does say 20. It, the 20% is after the fact. So it's really, if it's 100, you pay... Uh, you pay 125, and then 25 is one fifth of the total. So that this chomesh here actually means 25% of the principal. So if bishogeg you ate this truma, which happens to be chametz, so then you're mishalim karim chomesh. The mezid, if however you intentionally ate the truma, so then pater mi tashlumenu mitmeitzim. There we would say you are exempt from tashlumen. There's nothing that you need to pay the the kohen at all. Um, and we will see why that's the case. Just take a look at Rashi, two lines from the bottom of the page toward the end. Rashi says, Aval mezid, eno ela kishar gazlan be'alma. When you do it intentionally, when you, there's no intentional, there's no, there's no intentional eating of truma where you're going to be chayv on karen chomesh. That's only a din in shogeg. When you intentionally eat the food of a coin, you're a gazlan and you have to pay back like any other gazlan. It happens to be a lesser consequence because you don't have to pay the extra 25%, uh, whatever, the extra chomesh. But, but, oh yeah, absolutely. The onish happens to be smaller because of the mechanics of being a thief as opposed to the karen chomesh. It's true. The Aver is greater, no doubt. The Aver is greater. Also, with Gezel, there's a, it's a lav shiyeshbo, it's a lav hanita klase, which is that when you steal, you have the mitzvah heshivis exela shir gazal, you, you have way fewer, uh, way fewer consequences. Um, but yes, it's uh, correct. In this case, it would not be kishmak if you did this. So that's the Mishnah. And we're going to start um, with a similar sigya and come back to our Mishnah relatively soon. Two lines from the bottom, Lamed Aleph, Lamed Beis. The Gemara opens, Tanan Hasam. We learned in a Mishnah elsewhere. This Mishnah is in Maseches Trumos. And the Mishnah writes, Ha'ochel truma b'shogeg. This is a more pure case. Forget about the chametz. If a person ate truma b'shogeg, the halacha is mishal and karen v'chomesh, like we saw. Echad ha'ochel ve'echad ha'shose ve'echad ha'soch. This is true for achila, for eating, for shose, for drinking, and for soch, for anointing. You're not allowed to use uh, the, the shem and truma to, to be soch, to anoint yourself. That's also not allowed. And as well, on the top of Lama Bez Medalef, this, uh, this Mishnah adds, Echad Truma Tmeya Ve'echad Truma Tehora, in all of these cases, Mishalem Chomesh. And if you were to have eaten the Chomesh, let's say that you, were, you, you had a Chomesh that you were supposed to dedicate and you got hungry and you ate, you ate the Chomesh, then the Chomesha the Chomesha, the consequences just, they're, they're going to keep building on one another. Fine. End of the Mishnah. Iboyalahu, when one does this crime and they have to pay back the Kohen, I've taken your truma and now I have to pay you back. Do we pay back based on the cost of the food that I ate, current market value? Or do we say, I ate a loaf of bread and I replace a loaf of bread even if the pricing doesn't match? Which is going to be the model? Iboyalahu says the Gemara three lines down, Shumashalim, when somebody pays back truma that was eaten in Bishogeg, is it Lefi Mida Mishalim? Olafi dami is it the um, is it the volume or is it the value? A beautiful language that I uh, heard today from Rabbi Leibowitz. Is it the volume of what you ate? I have to get you a pint of a gallon of a loaf of irrelevant of the cost, or no? I have to measure in in dollars what I ate and pay you back that fixed amount. So that's the hakir the Gemara wants to say. Now let's get one thing out of the way. Four lines down. Kol ikara shavya arba zuze. If what you as the Kohen bought was really worth four, and then I stole it and ate it, and now it's only worth one, hush it that that's not a, an appropriate form of payback. To pay back 
less than what was valuable at the time of the theft is not okay because loti bailach. That's not even a shaila. Devadai kedemei ikar mishalim. There he'd have to pay for lefidamim based on the dollar amount. Why? Uh, because de lo garami gazlan. At the very least, you're you've stolen from this person. You need to pay back them. At a minimum, you need to pay back. It's not as the Mishnah writes. Kol hagazlan and mishalim kishas hagzela. You always, as a gazlan, would pay back based on the time of the theft. So we're not asking when there was a depreciation in what you stole. There for sure you have to pay back in Dumim to, to ensure that the Kohen got back what he rightfully lost. But Kiti Bailach, when do we have this Chakira, this question about whether or not we pay back a Kohen whose truma we ate, do we pay him back with volume, with mida, or do we pay him back with value, with Dumim? So Kiti Bailach is Dimei Kara Shav Yezuza, really at the time of the theft, uh, it was only worth one zuz, ulvisov shavya arba, and now it's worth more. My, what do we do? Do we say, lefi mida mishalem? Do we say that we're going to pay back based on the volume? De amar le griva achal griva mishalem. I ate a griva, it's a unit of, of food, and that's what I'm going to pay back. O dilma lefi dami mishalem, bezuz achal bezuz mishalem. Or do I pay back zuz for zuz? So which one is it? I mean, we've already seen the limitation. We can't go lower in number because that would be theft. We have to make sure it's a minimum, but let's say the loaf of bread costs more than what I initially ate. Fine. It, which one do we follow? Good. So first of the long lines, Lamed Beis, Lamed Aleph, the Gemara tries to answer this question. Amar Rav Yosef, 3rd century, Amor Toshma, Achal Grogris V'shileim Lotmarim. So this is a b'risa quoted by Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef was an Amora, so he's quoting from, from his Rebbe and from his Rebbe's Rebbe, all the way back to the times of the Tanoim. A person who ate from a Kohen, a Grogris, those are dried figs, but you paid back with Tmarim, you paid back with dates, which is, which is a better quality food, says the b'risa, Tavo alav bracha, a language we're familiar with from, uh, from Poskim, who've used this line many times. We've seen it uh, uh, in a number of areas in Halacha and throughout Shas. So fine, you paid back more. Uh, you didn't pay back more necessarily, but you paid back better, right? So here the Mishnah says, Tavo alav bracha, the b'risa. So, if you want to say that really when someone inadvertently takes truma from a Kohen, that he has to pay him back lefimida based on the volume, then I understand. Amtu lahachi. Then I understand the language of tavo ala bracha because the achel griva the grogeris the shavya zuza. You ate a unit of measure of dried figs that was worth a zuz. The kayahiv griva de tmarim the shavya arba. When you replace the units of food that you ate, you gave back the same units, but it's worth more. So then I understand the phrase of tavo ala bracha. That I understand the price that Rabbi Yosef is quoting. That's good. Ela e amris, we're four lines into the wide lines on the base, a third of the way down. Ela e amris, if he dumb in Mishalim, if you say that this brisa, which says that you ate a grogris and you paid back with tamarim, if you're saying that it's lefi dumb in Mishalim, then, then am I tabo ala bracha? What's the language of tabo ala bracha? What's tabo ala bracha? You paid back an exact amount of what you consumed. So it implies Rabbi Yosef that when we see the language in the brisa of tabo ala bracha, it shows that we must be paying back in, in mida, in volume, not in value. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Ve'amai. It has to be that way. Ve'amai tavo ala bracha. Because if you say that it's dumim, why is the mission, why is the b'risa praising you? De'achal midi, says the Gemara, here's why. Really, what happened was de'achal midi, de'lo kafitza le'zvine. Really, it could be that it's dumim. It could be that you're paying dollar for dollar. You ate five bucks worth of food and you replaced it with five bucks worth of food. But the five bucks of, uh, of food that you replaced it with are a better, a better worth. What does it mean? It says the Gemara, de'achal midi de'lo kafitza le'zvine. One, the food that you took was a food that not a lot of people eat, still worth $5, but you replaced it with an equivalent volume of food or an equivalent dollars amount of food to come to Shalin. You could make more money if you were to sell it. It's the same $5. So I paid back the same thing there. I gave you back something from which you could earn more. Very good. So what this does, in effect, is it takes away Rav Yosef's question, and we're back to our Chakira. We don't have an answer yet. We tried to bring a raya from the b'risa that said tovo la bracha, that when we pay back a kohen for eating his truma, it should be done b'mida, says the Gemara, no, labdafka. The tovo la bracha could be understood even if you're paying back in cash because you're, what you paid back in cash actually is not worth more in dollars, but it is, a, it is a, more of a, a food that people want to eat. All right, let's try again. Let's try again. It's not. 
Now we're going to see our Mishnah finally woven in. Okay, let's see what our Mishnah has to say. Tanan, ha'ochel trumas chametz bepesach. If a person were to eat truma, that was chametz on Pesach, and he did so b'shogeg, so the halacha is, as we saw, mishalim karen v'chomesh. There, you have to pay back to the Kohen, the principal, plus 25%. Now, i amris b'shlam alafi mida mishalim shapir. If you're going to say that we have to pay back the Kohen b'mida, we have to pay him back in volume, then I understand this line. I understand what's going on in this brisa. What would be the problem of saying damim? Ela'i amres lefi damim mishalim, chametz bepesach bar damim hu? You're going to pay back, chametz has no value. Chametz is aser ba'na. You, 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 you took something that you shouldn't have taken granted, but it has no financial worth. So says the Gemara, maybe we can infer from our Mishnah that it must be that we're only talking about Bemida. Because if we're talking about Chametz, Chametz has no value. So you can't equip... It's not his. He doesn't own it. Nobody owns the Chametz. What? If you have your full liquor cabinet, thousands of dollars worth of booze, and you forgot to sell it, you can't get it. You can't get it. You're probably not allowed to steal it because that person actually does technically own it because he's Chametz Shavu Lava We know that there's an Isra Hanaf for what you did wrong. Why is it when I eat it? But the payback, the onesh of paying back is a zero. It's not that the stealing is mutter. It's that there's no payback consequence for the theft. Wouldn't that be because you're Chayiv Karis and therefore you're, only, you're, you're not Chayiv Karis for owning Chametz. You're Chayiv no, Karis okay. for eating Chametz. Yeah. So in this case, when he ate, we're we're going to get to that in the Gemara today about Kamle Bidrava Mina, like we saw. We're going to get to that in this sugya. It'll, it'll tie in in about four lines. Uh, you'll see that momentarily. But no, you're not allowed to steal. It's just that the payback is a zero because Chametz has no value. Yeah, what if you're stealing from a guy and this value of Chametz? So we have an Isra Darabanan of stealing from a guy, but by right. him, then you have to, uh, whatever the book. You wouldn't be Chayav of Chomesh. Chomesh is only by Truma. Chomesh is only by Truma. Chomesh is not by regular theft. By a yid, maybe by other things, maybe kefil, but not not here. Okay, so that's the question the Gemara says: is that our Mishnah, which sit, which seems to say that uh, that you have to pay a chomesh, that only works if you say mida that you're replacing the volume of and not the value of, because chametz has no value. So are are you saying that chametz bepesach bar damim? Of course, there's no there's no value of chametz on pesach. Says the Gemara. In yes, there is. After all, we saw this shita a number of days ago and a number of times. Ha money, who must be the author of our Mishnah? Rabbi Yossi Haglili. Rabbi Yossi Haglili, he de Amar, Chametz Bepesach Mutter Behana. So, by virtue of the fact that our Mishnah says that you have to pay Karen Vachomesh, Lav Dafka that it's Bemida, maybe it's also Bedame, maybe it's not only volume, maybe it's even value. And our Mishnah is according to Rabbi Yossi Haglili, who holds that there is, in fact, an Isar Hana, that there is no that there is no Isar Hana when it comes to Chametz, a unique Shita, says the Gemara, Ihachi, if that's true, Ema Seifa, then the rest of the, our Mishnah doesn't make sense, because B'meizid, Pater Minat Tashlumen, means Me'etzim, if the end of our Mishnah says you're Pater from Tashlumen, why? I Rabbi Yossi Aglili, Amai Pater Minat Tashlumen, means Me'etzim. Why would you be exempt from payment of the food, or means Me'etzim, that's something that you could use for firewood? After all, it should have value. If you're Rabbi Yossi Aglili, you hold that chametz is mutter ba'na. So why would you say putter in the seifa? Answers the Gemara. This is what Hirsch was talking about a moment ago. Sover lakrev nechunya ben hakane. The way that we're understanding this Gemara, remember our question. We tried to say, when we pay back a coin for eating his chuma, do we pay him back in, in mida or in damim? Do we pay him back in volume or in value? We wanted to say from our Mishnah that it must be that it's in volume because chametz has no value. So then we said, no, that's not true. That's not true. It could be Rabbi Yossi Aglili who says that it is the case that, the, oh, so if that's true, says the Gemara, so then I don't understand um, why would why would Rabbi Yossi Aglili say Pater in our Mishnah? Answers the Gemara because of the principle of Kamle Bidurab You did something very wrong. What did you do that's wrong? Says the Gemara, our Mishnah is like Rabbi Yossi Aglili and like Rabbi Nechunya Ben Akana, the Tanya, the Brisa writes, we've seen this already once before. Reb Nechunya ben Akana equated the world of Yom Kippur to Shabbos in regards to Tashlumen. What does that mean? That if you do something wrong on Shabbos, 
you, uh, you, you do something that, that, that earns two onshin. One is a misas bezdin, and the other is a small tashlumen. There is no tashlumen. It wipes out the smaller of the two consequences. So says the Gemara, that's our Mishnah. Why in the seifa of our Mishnah do you not have an onesh of tashlumen? Because you got a bigger consequence. You stole truma. So then you don't have to do the truma. You, you, you have a, a much bigger problem going on by stealing truma. So forget about the tashlumen. So that explains that explains Rabbi Yossi Aglili. This was attempt number two, and still we don't have an answer. So says the Gemara, let's try again. Kitanoi. Maybe this Chakira of when we pay back a Kohen for taking his truma, of whether or not we pay him bimiza or bidamim, do we pay him back with the volume of what he ate irrelevant of the cost? Or do we pay him back specifically dollar for dollar for what we ate? Says the Gemara, maybe there's a machlokes in the Tanoim, a precedent for this. And we're going to see two brises, one after the other, until the very last word of the page. Um, they're repetitive, so uh, just listening to one will help you understand the other. It's a dialogue between, between the Amorite. What's the case? The case is like this. Halfway down, Lamed Be'ez Medal. Pa'ochel trumas chametz bepesach, patrumina tashlumen umidmei etzim divi Rebbe Akiva. Um, a person who eats trumas chametz, he eats chametz that is truma an pesach, uh, he is exempt from tashlumen, and for what would have been the value of using the truma as uh, as fuel, that's Rabbi Akiva's opinion. You would be pater. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri mechayev. Now this would be the application of these two shitas, according to uh, the first shita of Rabbi Akiva. The fa- the fact that you're pater from tashlumen is because there's an iser hana. There's an iser hana. We have to understand exactly why. Uh, he holds well. We know why he holds the Esr Hana. And what does Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri say? Mechay, because he says you're paying back the mida. You're paying back in volume. So the Esr Hana is not relevant here. So maybe this is the precedent. But the Bryce says lengthy and continues. Amar lo Rabbi Akiva the Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. Rabbi Akiva who says that you're potter for eating this food. Uh, he says to Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri who says that you're chayiv. I don't understand. I don't understand. How could you say you're chayiv? Chametz doesn't have the status of mutter hana. It only has the status of aser behana. So Amar Lo Rav Yochanan Ben Nuri Rav Yakiva says back to him, "Well, we do actually have another area of halacha where uh, where we see that we do have value for it, even though it's aser behana. Umahana yesh leechol truma tmeya b'shar kol yimosa shana shemeshalim. We have truma throughout the year. There we say that it's an aser hana, but there we say during the year you have to pay back. Amar Lo Rav Yakiva says back to Rav Yochanan Ben Nuri." Lo, that's not correct. In regards to the world of truma year round, if it's truma tmeya, there we would say, by truma, it's true that you're not allowed to eat it. However, you are able to burn that, that truma if necessary. So there you have some type of ana. Tomar bazen, regards to our case of chametz, so it says, says Rabbi Akiva back to Rabbi Yochanan Menuri, I don't understand your shita. Makes no sense to me. How can you say what you're saying? It's you can't say the truma is the same as chametz. Halamaze dome the truma is tutim be'anavim. It would be like a truma that is uh, something that's not that's not con- that's not burnable. Something that you can't use as fuel, like tutim be'anavim, like berries and grapes and itma she'in lo balo heter achila balo heter asaka. So the, that's how he argues back on Rav Yochanan Ben Nuri. Now the Gemara is going to finish off this brisa, though this is less relevant to our conversation. But before we finish off this brisa. This is what the Gemara is assuming. We wanted to say, our question was, do we pay back a Kohen, Bimida or Bidamim? And the Gemara wants to say, it's a machlokas Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. Rabbi Akiva, who says that it's putter, holds that we would normally pay back Bidamim, but here there are no Damim to pay back because it's an Isr Hana. So there's zero dollar value to the Chamet. Masha'in Kane, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, who says that you're chayiv to pay back, he would say you're paying back Bamida, you're paying back by volume, and therefore there is no dollar amount. I took a food and I have to replace a food, not because of the dollar amount. It's not an Isr Hana question. The item needs to be replaced. Now let's finish this. When, uh, when is this the case, says the Gemara, that we actually have a case of truma that is hectish. Again, it's a bit of a sidebar to our conversation. Says the Gemara, b'mafresh truma v'hichmitza. When the truma was first separated properly, and then it became chametz. Aval, if you were mafresh trumas chametz, if you were mafresh the truma once it was already chametz, sivrei akol enikdusha. Everyone agrees that that's not even truma. So to enter the field of conversation for today, we're assuming that the hafrasha of the truma was done the heter and it became chametz. Otherwise, the conversation is a non-starter. That's Bryson number one. 
which maybe reflects the chakira of whether or we would pay, whether or not we would pay back the kohen, the dumim or bemida, if we would pay him back in cash or if we would pay him back in volume. Tanya idach, ten lines from the bottom. Let's see another brisa, almost the same. The end of the brisa will have a little bit of a twist, well, an important one. We'll get there shortly. Another brisa. Finasan la kohen esa kodesh. We have to give the kohen the kodesh. Dabar haru leos kodesh. It has to be something that's fitting when we get when we pay back a kohen. It has to be a food that is eligible for truma. Prat laochel truma truma schametz bepesach shepater min tashlumen umid meetim. This excludes, says uh, we will soon see it's Rabbi Elazar ben Yaakov. He says this pasuk excludes truma schametz that by truma schametz you're exempt, seemingly like Rabbi Akiva that because there's an iser hana by chametz. Therefore, your patrimi not tashlumen, dibri Rabbi Elazar ben Yaakov. The Rabbi Elazar chasma mechayev. He, like Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, says that you're chayev to pay because he seems to hold the other side of the coin that we're paying back b'mida, we're paying back in volume. Very good. Let's continue the b'risa. Amar lo Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, the Rabbi Elazar chasma. The uh, lenient opinion who says that you're exempt from paying because there's an iser hana, says to Rabbi Elazar chasma, who says that you're chayev to pay, I don't understand. What kind of hana can you possibly get from chametz that you would say that you're obligated to pay? So Omar lo Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Elazar Chasma, the Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Elazar Chasma, who says that you're chayev to pay, he says back to Rabbi Elazar ben Yaakov, during the year also. And it's a different b'risa, but they're using the same line of reasoning. The reason why I'm saying that you're chayev to pay is that during the year, we would have said by truma, which is tmeya, that you're not allowed to eat. We would have said you had to pay for that too. You can't eat it. Says, says um, Rabbi, Lazar, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov to Rabbi Eliezer chazma, Amar lo, four lines from the bottom. Lo, you will misunderstand. Imam respit truma tmeya b'shar yimos hashana. In regards to truma that's tmeya throughout the year, shafal pi she'in lo bahetar achila, yesh lo bahetar asaka. There still is some type of benefit to truma tmeya. Granted, you can't eat it, but for hasaka, for using it as fuel, that's considered permissible. So if that's true, Tomar, tomar Bezu, that's not true here. In regards to Chametz, She'ein lo balo heter achila, v'lo heter asaka. So it says the Gemara, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov says to Rabbi Lazar Chasma, you've misunderstood. You are trying to tell me that because by truma, you're allowed to, to pay back during the year in actual cash because, because uh, you say that it's, uh, it's just, that's our precedent for paying back. What does Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov expect? You're wrong. The comparison doesn't work. By the truma, you have an outlet to use it as fuel, but by chametz, you don't. So now Rabbi Elazar Chasma responds, and this answer differs from Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri in the previous price. Amar lo, af bezu yesh lo heter hasaka. Even by chametz, you can use it. That shows that Rabbi Eliezer Chasma holds that it's mutter be'ana. This is different than the previous price. In the previous price, we had a clean distinction. The, the sheet of Rabbi Akiva held that we're paying back Bedamim, and the sheet of, of Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri was saying that we were paying back Bemida. Here, it's a little different because the opinion that requires you to pay back Rabbi, Eliez, Rabbi Elazar Chasma, he says the reason you have to pay back is because Chametz is mutter be'ana. Oh, so that's how this Gemara ends differently. Shim Ratzah, Kohen, Merita, Lifne, Kalbo, O Masika, Tachas, Tavshilo, that a Kohen is able to use this Chametz which, uh, which is not supposed to be eaten. You can put it out in front of a dog or you can use it as fuel for a food. So it says the Gemara on the top of Lamed Beis and Beis, the one highlight, we just saw four shitas in the Tanayim. Three out of the four, says Abayim, three out of the four hold that there is in fact an Isr Hana'a when it comes to Chametz and one doesn't. Amar Abayi, top of Lamed Beis and Beis, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, Kul hu svira luhu Chametz bepesach asr behana. The Gemara doesn't say this line explicitly, but they're leaving out the last sheet on the second b'risa, which is the sheet of Rabbi Elazar Chasma, who held that there was no Isr Hana by Chametz. And that's why he said that it would work out. So, Uvehapli, in each of the b'risas, here is what each side is arguing about. B'risa number one, the machlokas was between Rabbi Akiv and Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. B'risa number two, the machlokas was between um, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov and Rabbi Elazar Chasma. What is the machlokas about? So in the first b'risa, the Hopligi, the Rabbi Akiva savar l'fi dami mishalim. Rabbi Akiva was of the opinion that you have to pay back dollar for dollar what you ate, and therefore you pay nothing because it's aser behana because chametz is aser behana. So therefore, there's nothing to pay. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri savar l'fi mida mishalim. You pay back by volume, and therefore you're chayev. It's not dollar for dollar. You're replacing the item, irrelevant of its cost. 
says the Gemara, Pshita, isn't that obvious? Isn't that clear that in the first b'risa that we saw, the machlokas between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, that they hold these respective shitas, the Rabbi Akiva holds that it's dumim, and that's why, because chametz is aser ben the, the payback amount is zero, the item has no value. And the reason why Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri requires payback is because he holds that we're paying back in volume, says the Gemara, shita, that's obvious. Lav davka. Mao de Tema, you might have argued that maybe Rav Yochanan ben Nuri, Nami Kiriba Kiva Svirule, the Amr Lifi Dhamma Mishale, maybe really they're not holding different shitas of how to pay back the coin. Maybe they all agree that you pay back the coin with money. Why then would we assume that this is the case? Because the Hasam, seven lines down, Lama Bezam and Amma Bez, the Hasam Hainu Taima de Kamechai Mishum, the Savar La Kiriba Yosi Aglili, Dhamma Hamets Pepesach Motor Beano. Maybe we could have thought, says the Gemara, Havamina, that in the first b'risa between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, maybe we could have thought that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri really held that Hametz was Moter Be'ana. And really, they both hold that the way to pay back is Bedamim. But they have different answers because Rabbi Akiva holds that Hametz is Aser Be'ana, and therefore there's no value. And maybe Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri holds like Rabbi Yossi Aglili that it's Moter Be'ana, and therefore the Hametz has value, and that's why he's Machayev. That's a possibility, says the Gemara, Kamash Malan, by virtue of the fact that Abai is spelling it out to tell you that Rabbi Akiva holds that it's Damim and that Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri holds that it's Bemidah, it shows you that he doesn't hold of the Shita. Uh, it shows you that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri does not hold like Rabbi Yossi Aglili. He does not hold that Chametz is Mutter Be'ana. He holds that it's Aser Be'ana. And then the only way to explain the Shita of Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri is if you assume he's paying back Bemidah. Good. Says the Gemara, why, why not? Why can't it be that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri actually holds that Chametz is Mutter Be'ana? Says the Gemara, because we have another b'risa where we saw that with Rabbi Lazar Chasma, and there the language was different at the end of that b'risa. What, what is the difference? Im Kain, says the Gemara, a quarter of the way down, less, 10 lines down. Im Kain, if you, you really want to say that in the first b'risa that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri really holds like Rabbi Yossi Aglili and Chametz is Mutter Be'ana, if you really want to say that, Nedar later of Yochanan ben Nuri Akiva, then Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri should have responded to Rabbi Akiva, Ki hechi de mahat lahadr le Rabbi Elazar Chasma, le Rabbi Elazar Yaakov. We saw on the bottom of the page that what did it say on the last line of Lamed Beis and Madal? What did Rabbi Eliezer Chasma say? You can feed it to the dogs. Well, that clearly is a sign that he holds that Chametz is not is not Asar Behana. If Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri in the first place, he really held that. Maybe we should have seen that answer, but we didn't see that answer. So because Rabbi, Rabbi Lazar Chasma gave the answer that showed it was Mutter Be'ana, and because Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri in the first place that didn't give that answer, that shows us that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri does not hold of the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Aglili, and therefore he must hold like Rabbi Akiva. And therefore, the only way to explain the b'risa is to say that Rabbi Akiva holds that when we pay back a coin for the for the um, for the chametz food that we took from the truma food that we took, it has to be b'damim. And since chametz is aser behana, we have to pay zero. And Rabbi Yochanan Minuri must hold that we pay back b'mida and we pay back based on volume and based on the item, the conceptual item, and not the dollar amount of the item. And therefore, uh, you are chay. Tanu Rabbanan. Let's go to a general case of truma. Uh, we're just all connected in the sugya here already. So let's go to a very fundamental sugya in the world of truma. Tana Rabbanan at the two dots, 10 lines down, 12 lines down. Ha'ochel kezayis truma mishalim karen v'chomesh. A person, this has nothing to do with Pesach. A person who eats a kezayis of truma, they are obligated to pay principal plus 25%. Abba Sha'ul Omer only aje hebo shavaputa. Yes, he agrees to the share of a kezayis. But it also has to be Shava Pruta. It has to have a minimum value of whatever. Let's call it 10 cents. Shava Pruta is very inexpensive. This comes up Halacha Lamaisa when um, this comes up Halacha Lamaisa by marriage. That when you give someone an item to get married to them, it has to be Shava Pruta. So when, you, when a Masada Kudushin is doing a wedding, they'll hold up the ring in front of the Aiden and say, does this look like it's worth a Shava Pruta? They'll inspect it. They'll see that it's metal. They'll say Shava Pruta. It's worth a Shava Pruta. Okay, you give it to the groom. The groom takes it. Harat and the Kudesh. That's like, perfect. That works out great. But let's say that a person's giving over a, a little nothing. They're giving over literally a tissue. They're giving over a tissue. Hare ad mikudesh asli be tissue zu kedas moshev Yisrael. The chor, they're not mikudesh because that's not a Shava Pruta. So here... It's not a good idea in general. <laughs> Don't go cheap. Don't go cheap. You should give something more when you're getting married. You should give something more than a tissue. 
So um, this, uh, this I, told, I think I, in, a, in a different area, I think I, I shared this shyly with you about this guy who gave a girl a pencil. I told you this story. Mm-hmm. This guy who gave a girl a pencil. So that's Shava Pruta. That's already, that already cost 10 cents, 15, 20 cents to build it. So that already would be Shava Pruta. Okay, fine. So uh, that's what the Gemara says here is that uh, Abba Shol says that um, you need to also uh, have the va- the value of the kezayis be a shava pruta? My time of the, the time of the Tanakama, Why does the Tanakama say that uh, eating a kezayis is a measure? Because Amar Krav Ish ki yochal kodesh bishkaga yochal the achila bekezayis. The language of achila when we speak about shiurim, we assume that the achila is bekezayis. It's based on the pasuk adrasha. Says the Gemara of Abishol, My time. Why does Abishol say that it needs to be a shava pruta? Answers the Gemara Amar Krav Vinasan. There has to be an asina, the ain nisina pachos mishava pruta. When we have a giving, when we do something of significance, when we're giving something to someone, it has to be worthwhile. Normally, when we see this next word, the idach, it means we're flipping back to the other person. It's actually not uh, correct here. Another question for Abishol, but the idach, uh, Abishol, uh, nami haksiv yochal. I don't understand. It also says yochal. So why? Why are you taking the word venasan to induce the standard of Shavapruta? We already have the standard. Don't you agree to the Pasuk of Yochal that it has to be a Kezayis? Says the Gemara, no, that word Yochal, hahu, prat the mazik That's to tell you that it's only by Achila that, you vi- that you're obligated to pay Karen Bechomesh, but not by being mazik truma, different halacha. I have a Tanakama, Hoksiv Vinasan. The Tanakama, why don't you say that it has to be a Shavapruta? After all, the Pasuk says Vinasan. Answers the Gemara, Hahumi Baile Ladava Relios Kodesh. You have to be able, the word Vinasan doesn't mean Shavapruta according to the Tanakama. The Tanakama does not require that the Kazayas that you eat be a Shavapruta be, to be obligated to pay Karen Chomesh. Rather, what does the word Vinasan mean? That when you pay back the Kohen with food, it has to be food that is eligible to be Kodesh. Very good. So these are basic machlokas between the Tanakam and Abishol in regards to when we pay Karen Chomesh. Tanu Rabbanon, let's say a person ate a little bit less. We're in the middle of the page. We'll be going on until about 10 or 12 lines from the bottom of the page. Tanu Rabbanon, ha'ochel chuma pachos mi kezayis. Let's say you ate a chatishir. So let's say you ate a less than a kezayis. You ate a, a very, very small amount. So then, very interesting, what's the uh, consequence? Meshalim is a keren. We, we split up the, the, the onish. You only pay back the principal and you don't pay the 25% fine. Says the Gemara, hey, how did you pull that off? If there isn't the value of a Shava Pruta, then Karen Nami Lola If you ate something that is so infinitesimally small that there's zero value to it, then you shouldn't be paying the principal either. But the Ispa Shava Pruta, if in fact it does have the value of a Shava Pruta, then Chomish Nami Lishalim. You're, you're in the twilight zone that you've you ate less than a Kezaya, so you only pay the principal but not the, the Chomish. It's Truma. But you, either you violated it or you didn't, but you're splitting the punishment in half. You just pay back the principal and not the, the punishment. No Knas, very strange. Says the Gemara, Le'olam, really, it's the East Bay Shava Pruta. Really, you ate less than a Kezais, and its value is a Shava Pruta. Ve'afilu hachi, even so, Kevan delays ba Kezais, since there isn't a Kezais, it's Taka the Din, Mishalem Esa Karen, Ve'ena Mishalem Esa Chomesh. Says the Gemara, your Havamina, that the Shava Pruta would be the distinguishing factor is incorrect. Doesn't make a difference. Even if it's a Shava Pruta, but it's less than a Kezais, then the Onesh is removed. You give back only the Karen, but no Chomesh. Says the Gemara, Amrua Rabbanan Kame de Papa. They said this uh, Torah about a chazi, uh, about a partial kezayis, less than a kezayis. They said this in front of Rav Papa. Um, ha, says the Gemara, Ha de lo ke Abashal. Remember, Abashal said that you're only chayiv in Karen Vachomesh if it's a Shava Pruta. We just said it's all Shava Pruta. So says Rav Papa, this does not work according to Abashal. Why not? It's the Ike Abashal, Ha Amar Kevan Shi Yesh Ba Shava Pruta, Fal Gavdalais Ba Kezayis. Abba Shaul seemed to say that the standard was Shava Pruta, and what Rav Papa is being mechadish here is that even if it isn't a Kezayis, now that's not the way we understood the, the Mishnah that we saw between Abba Shaul and the Tanakama. We assumed that Abba Shaul was adding a layer, that it has to be a Kezayis, and it has to be Shava Pruta in order to trigger the Karen Vachomish. Here, Rav Papa is saying, that's not right. Really, the way to understand Rav Papa, sorry, really the way to understand Abba Shaul is that it only needs to be a Shava Pruta, even if it's less than a kezayis, he would still say that it's Karen v'chomesh. So therefore, this can't be like 
Abishol. Because Abishol would say that even if it's less than a Kezayis, but as long as it's more than a Shava Pruta, you'd be obligated in the full punishment. Omar Lehu, um, Omar Lehu Rav Papa, Rav Papa said back to them, Afilu Tema Abishol, you're not correct. It could even be Abishol. Abishol Tarte Bai. Abishol only said his din, that Truma needs to be paid in full with Karen and with Chomesh when you have both Achila B'Kezayis and Shavapruta, where it is a, a, the appropriate minimum volume, and it also has a dollar amount of a Shavapruta. Says the Gemara, they push back. Umi boy Abashal Tarte. Do we? Does he really hold them both? Let's see. The Atnan Abashal Omer es sheyesh bo Shavapruta chay b'Tashlumin es sheein bo Shavapruta eno chay b'Tashlumin. Doesn't say anything about Kezayis. Abashal seems to only be speaking about one factor, a singular factor, Shavapruta even if it's less than a kezayis. So Rapapa wanted to say that he needs both. It doesn't seem to play out that way. This Mishnah seems very clear. Amru lo, lo amru shavapruta, lo le'inyam mi'ila bilvad. When does Abashal use his principle of shavapruta? That's only true by mi'ila, says this Mishnah. Ava le'truma e'no chayev at shehebo kezayis. So the, this Mishnah is pushing back very strongly, but here's the problem. It says, says the Gemara Be'im Isa, if you want to say that Abba Shaul really requires both, then it shouldn't have said, Ad Kevan It's a very subtle, nuanced, linguistic issue with the Mishnah. That's what it should have said, Mi Boile. And therefore, based on that small linguistic change, we, re- we, um, we reject the Habamina that he needs both. And we assume, therefore, he only needs one. And the Gemara concludes with this, that Abba Shaul would hold that for a Shava Pruta only, even if it's less than a Kezayis, he would still hold that you would be chayev to pay both the keren and the chomish. We'll stop right here and pick up with the afra of papa tomorrow night. Oh, I see somebody asked a question.